Good morning, church family. Great to see you this morning. Let's stand and rejoice in what God has done for us. He's changed us. He's forgiven us, taken us from death to life. So this is a happy day that we celebrate. Jesus rose from the dead, and that meant we can get eternal life as well. We celebrate that we have you in our life now, and we have you in our life forever in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Last week, we looked at that famous verse, John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son, that whoever believes in Him will not perish but have, what will they have? Eternal life. Great. Just a great summary of what God has done for us. And so we learned this new song. So we're going to give it another together that's based on that verse, John three sixteen. Oh, 
His one and only Son to save us for God so loved the world that He gave us. His one and only Son to save us forever. Jesus is waiting, so love the world. Amen. Thank you, God, that you love the world so much that you gave your one and only Son, that whoever believes in you will not perish but have everlasting life. We rejoice in that truth in Jesus' name. Amen. Take a seat. Say hi to someone you haven't said hi to yet. Say here, Ben. Say here. Steve, don't, don't run too far. Don't run too far. We're going to get to that next song pretty quickly. Check one, two. All right. Great to see you this morning. Um, Terry, if we can have that slide, the kids slide. If we can, we've got heaps of kids here today, but maybe the kids can come out the front. Maybe the parents can come with them if they're shy. We want to just uh, acknowledge our kids. We want to make sure in church we're praying for our kids at times before they go out to kids' church and see them. So where's all the young people? Come on, Stefan, come out the front here. I want to show you a picture. And then we're going to sing a song, a kids' song together before you go out to kids' church. Regan's going to come and help with the actions too, aren't you, Regan? Come on. Come right out the front here. Right out the front so we can pray for you. And here's our wonderful kids leader for today as well, Lynn. So uh, we appreciate those that serve the kids as well, don't we, church? All right. So look at these beautiful pictures on the screen up there. Uluru. Who's been to Uluru? Any kids been to Uluru? No. Adults? Which adults have been? Oh, okay. All right. What about the Great Barrier Reef? Anyone been to Queensland and the Great Barrier Reef swimming? No. No, you've been to Queensland. I've been to Great Barrier Reef. You've been to Great Barrier Reef. It's pretty cool, isn't it? The three sisters of Katoomba, who's been there? Yeah, Stefan's been there as well. Have the Vipons been there? No, no. So you've been, oh, oh, wow, they're here. We'll get to the celebration soon, but yeah, very good, John and Sherry, as well. And what about, who's been to that one with the cave up the top there, kids? Who's been to that one? Kay's Beach. Have you been to Kay's Beach, Tommy? Yes? Has Minnie been to Kay's Beach? 
Yes, they have. All these parts are part of God's beautiful creation, aren't they? And it's not an accident. And none of these beautiful kids are an accident. God gives life and breath to all things. And so we rejoice in the beauty of creation. But the most important thing in all creation is people, isn't it? And we rejoice in you, beautiful kids. We love your church, don't we? And we're so thankful for them. So we want to sing a song and sing a song about God's creation together. Regan's going to come and stand over here or there so the kids can see the actions. All the adults are going to stand up. You're going to do the actions as well. It's pretty easy. You've got to clap in the chorus and then you've got to do every mountain. We're going to show them the mountain. Come stand here so we can see every mountain. Everyone do a mountain. Every river. Everyone do a river. Every water. Fall. We all fall down. And then we can do the one and only God. The one and only God. He made it all. All right. So are we ready for this song? rejoice in the beauty of your creation, but we thank you for the most beautiful thing of all people and for the gift of children. We love these wonderful, beautiful children that are part of our church, and we pray your great blessing on them in the name of Jesus. Amen. You can take a seat. We've got a lollipop for the kids before they go out. If the parents, if you don't want them to have one, come and tell them. All right, the kids were going to rush out there, but in our celebration time, uh, Kyrie wants to celebrate something before she goes, what, what are you going to celebrate? You don't want to now. You told me you want to celebrate. You want mummy to do it. <laughs> yes, Kyrie's actually wanted to do this for a few weeks now, um, but hasn't been here, but she's very happy and wanted to celebrate that she's at Belmont Christian College now. And she's loving it. And she loves getting to have lots of friends from school um, that she sees here at church and making lots of other friends and being able to talk about God at school. That's awesome.
Good on you, Kai. Well done. All right. Harvey, can you come and help me, mate? Well, the kids can go out to their kids' church and have a great time. We love you, kids. It's great to have you with us. And we continue to celebrate as a church family as well. Uh, you got a couple of those pictures there, Terry? Where's those couple of uh, the, the wedding pictures? So we've had uh, two weddings this week. Where's the first one? There's Rachel and Bevan. And that was yesterday. And we had a, a wonderful time uh, yesterday. So that was great. We're a little weary, but we're excited. That was lovely. And uh, congratulations to them. They're on their honeymoon. And here's John and Sherry. And they're actually in church this morning. So uh, that was Thursday. So congratulations to you. And uh, we're so excited for you and the journey ahead. Uh, blessing. That's exciting, isn't it, church, to see people celebrating marriage together. Other things to celebrate. I know Ash is celebrating. She said she would love people to know. Just she's had long time illness and she's gone to the doctors and they're saying all clear. And they're pretty, they're pretty amazed, the doctors. So we're celebrating with Ash. Go and give Ash a celebrate. So um, if you want to find out more, go and have a chat with Ash about that journey. Uh, but she's just giving thanks that both the medical treatment, but also God's been at work in that. It's just been great to see as well. Uh, we're celebrating uh, the, the, the ladies. Listen, get involved, ladies. It's kind of every fortnight getting together for their morning tea together. So they had a great time. So thanks to the ladies. Is Glenda here? I can't see Glenda. She's kind of getting it. No, she's not here. But uh, get involved in those celebrations as well. All right, birthdays. Anika had a birthday. Happy birthday to you. Oh, your mum, yes. You better give her a couple seeing it's your mum. Well done. Happy birthday. And Jenny Willis, a young 91. Well, happy birthday to, to Jenny. That's the only birthdays on my list. Oh, your birthday as well. Oh, I've forgotten your name. John. Down the front, how old are you? 13. Oh, into the, those teenage years. Awesome. One down the front there. Happy birthday to you as well. Any other birthdays or anniversaries that I've missed? Wedding anniversary? Oh, how many years? 36 years. Congratulations. <laughs> Exciting times. Exciting times. It's really good to celebrate as a church family. Oh, Pasco's got one. Yeah, Chris. Yeah, just celebration for, um, just want to celebrate Sammy and Casey who this week gave up um, you know, their personal money to donate to ICMC and um, taking on a sponsored goal. So we're really proud of Yeah, it's great, great to see. Great to see young people taking up the, the cause of Jesus themselves and uh we need our parents to influence, but we need kids to take it up for themselves, don't we? So that's exciting to see uh, them moving that as well. And we know in the midst of all the joy and fun, there's also struggles as well. Uh, Mark Fricker just wanted to let you know, thanks to those who have been praying for with his dad. Uh, there's been some improvement, obviously, at 95. I've got that right, haven't I? It's a, when you're getting ill health at 95, it's a challenging, isn't it? And to know what to do and how homes work and all sorts of things. So it's a challenging season, but a bit of improve. And um, he's very thankful for those that are supported in prayer and encouragement. But we want to keep praying into that as well. So let me uh, pause, give thanks to God. You grab yourself a lolly there, Harp. Well done as well. Heavenly Father, we just rejoice in your goodness and your kindness and your grace and your mercy. Thank you for the many blessings. Thank you for all the good things that come from you. We recognise every good gift is from above. And so we're so thankful. Thank you for those that have got married this week and we celebrate with them and we thank you for the gift of marriage. It's your design. It's the best way to do relationships. And so we just rejoice uh, with the choices these people have made to, to find that Christian partner and the choice to honour you in marriage. And we just pray every wisdom and blessing on them uh, in today and in the days ahead as well. Uh, Lord, for those that have enjoyed birthdays and anniversaries and all those wonderful relational things, we just give you thanks and all the glory for how you have created us to love one another. In the midst of that, God, we know there are struggles and difficulties for a whole lot of people in our church family. And uh, just one particular, we do think of Mark's dad and, and just of Mark and the family who, who worry and care for him. Uh, we want to pray, Lord, that there would be great wisdom for all those that are making decisions, for the family, for doctors and for all those that are, are looking after him. Uh, that there'd be just great wisdom knowing the best decisions to care for him and that you would watch over him. Thank you too, as Mark said, that he said he has a faith in you. And I say thank you that you're by his side. And we pray that faith will become more and more real, uh, more and more significant in him in the days ahead. 
as he thinks about his own life. So thank you, God, that you do love us so much (laughs) and that you journey with people even through the valley of the shadow of death. You are with them and we thank you for that. For each person, God, that's having a struggle and a difficulty, remind them again that you are with them and for them and love them. You're always working your best plans even when we don't feel it. Help us to trust you, we pray in the midst of that. And help us as a church to love one another. Thank you, as we just heard, that people are caring and supporting and praying for one another. We pray that would just be the, the story of our church where we're loving each other well in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. A couple of things happening in church life before we move on today. Uh, short little chat after church. If you want to help set up and pack up communion, that's, that's only once a month. If we have a few people, you'll only be doing it probably once every three or four months. But we just want a few people so that uh, one less thing for the pastor have to do, right, um, as well. So if you're, if you're happy to maybe help with that, come down the front after church, grab your cuppa, and we'll just have a bit of a chat about what that looks like just to set up communion uh, as well. Get involved with that. Uh, the other thing, if you're not on the church email list, uh, quite often I'm sending out prayer points or information or reminders. There's a sheet up the back of church. Just write your name and your email if you'd like to be on the church email list. You'll get information about what's happening in church life, reminders of events, and a whole lot of important information. Uh, so it's good to be connected that way. So if you're not on the church email, write your name and your email on the list at the back up there. Tonight, 5 p.m., we're having a bit of a discussion around what we might be doing with our PM service, what that might look like, uh, whether it's something different, whether it's the same. Uh, so anyone that's interested in any way maybe of being part of Night Church, whether you want to be part of helping organise it or whether you just want to attend and you've got some ideas of what might be helpful, come along tonight, 5pm here. We're going to have a bit of a chat and see what ideas people have got about how we might go forward uh, with our PM service. So come along tonight, get involved in that as well. One, two, three, four. This Wednesday, 10am, again, all these things will go out in the email tomorrow. So if you're not in the email, you might forget them. So uh, make sure you get on the email. Tomorrow, uh, Wednesday, 10 a.m., prayer for the persecuted church here. So we want to continue to uphold believers around the world who find it very difficult to follow Jesus, uh, people that are really struggling. So come along, 10 a.m. on Wednesday, and there's going to be some prayer for the persecuted church as well there. Creative ladies, they're on tomorrow, aren't they, Michelle? 2 p.m., 2 p.m. at your house, get involved Ladies, if you don't know what it's about, if you don't know whether it's something that you might be interested in, go and have a chat with Michelle uh, after church. Uh, She'd love to invite some new people, wouldn't you, Michelle? New people are welcome. You don't have to be an expert at sewing or anything, you know, they they will help you participate. I I think it's more about the cuppa than the craft. But anyway, that's, uh, but yeah, but get involved tomorrow at 2 p.m. And if you're not sure, go and see Michelle. Yep. Yep. Okay, so mid-April will be the next stall at Mount Hutton Shopping Centre, two days there. Isn't it great that they get to go out as a church group and get into a public shopping centre? I just think that's wonderful they get to do that as well. And uh, So, yeah, anyway, I could go on and about it, but all these ministries, we've got so many other. Yes, Jeffrey. Yeah, de- dealing with grief, one of, you can't have a chat with Jeff after, maybe a prayer with him. Uh, he's dealing with just that sadness of loss that we all have to go through, isn't it? It's a, it's a tough thing. And yeah, love and blessings to you, Jeff. And maybe someone after church too might like to just go up to Jeff and say, hey, let's pray a blessing on you uh, as well. Uh, that's good. Thanks, Jeff. A couple more. All right. I'm going to get uh, Belinda up here. Tell us something that's happening with young adults. By the way, uh, of course, we've got a bit of confidentiality around this on camera, but the person that's uh, going overseas soon to do some work is up, I think it's nearly getting towards 90% funding. Is that correct? Some person might want to yeah, give a bit of a thumbs up or 82, 82% funding uh, for our wonderful person that's going to be going overseas soon. So keep praying into that. Uh, it's getting there uh, with that great support for that person as well. Blinda, come and tell us, young adults, something's happening. Yes, you may remember a few weeks ago we were talking about the Amazing Race that's happening on the 18th of March, so in a couple of weeks, next week. Um, Thank you to everyone who's already come up and agreed to have a station at their house. We're very grateful for that. We didn't expect so many people to come straight away. We are looking for a couple or a few more people that would be willing to 
um, basically host a small activity at their house. If you want, if you need ideas, we can have ideas for you and we'll provide everything for you. If you have your own idea, that's great. Just let us know what it is so we're not doubling up. Um, it'll it run between about 6.30 and 8.30. Um, and come see me after if you need more information or you're willing to do that. And if you know any young adults that want to join on the night, there's plenty of room for people to come and join in the teams. Uh, Belinda will send me a message this afternoon, so I get that on the email tomorrow too uh, as well. We get that, so you get that as well. All right, and uh, one more, mainly music. Where's Sue? Where is she? Come and tell us what's how mainly music started off the year, Sue. Okay. Hello, everybody. My name's Sue, and I'm fortunate to run our mainly music group. Mainly Music is a music play group for children under school age. However, if there are children who have been homeschooled, sometimes they come along to Mainly Music as well. We have it on a Monday and a Thursday. The program actually runs a half an hour, but then we have a wonderful morning tea afterwards. Last year, we had, I need figures for this, we had 86 children come during the year and 65 families. So it's a wonderful ministry. We like to uh, celebrate things during the year. So we do the usual things, Easter, Christmas, uh, Father's Day, Mother's Day, those sort of things. And last year we had a family day or a family night. And we had a wonderful evening. We had a huge turn up. This hall was packed with past and present families. And it was wonderful. And we struggling financially so we just had hot chips and bread and I can tell you that was the most popular evening we've ever had hot chips and bread <laughs> so we also like to celebrate uh, the children's birthdays and at Christmas time we give the children a book so with our birthdays we give them a little present and as I said we're struggling a little bit uh, financially last year so this year we decided we would do a little bit of fundraising and one of our helpers brought in some beautiful proteas from Bronwyn's house. Where are you, Bronwyn? She's here. There she is. Thank you, Bronwyn. We raised $100 with proteas. That is just amazing. Isn't that fantastic? So we're going to be doing a little bit more fundraising. And also a couple of people have given me donations. And it's all just for Mainly Music to help with the birthday present. So that's wonderful. Once we've had our program, as I say, we have morning tea. All the helpers that come bring the morning tea. And we always pray before the morning tea. So the children are learning, thank you for the world so sweet. So it is a God-driven ministry. I would like my helpers to stand up now, please. Wonderful. If you just have a glance at my helpers... Let's give our helpers a round of applause. Thank you. Thank you very much, my helpers. As you can see, my helpers have been doing it for a long time. And we're not spring chickens. So today I, hand, I gave a little note in the bulletin, just if anybody else would be willing to help. I'm not asking for people to put their name down to come every week. But it would be really helpful if I had a little list of people that could help on the days that we struggle. We, because it's a playgroup, the attendance is casual. Sometimes we might have five children. Another time we might have 15 children. Our morning tea is sitting on the floor. We can't do that. <laughs> well, we can, but then we can't get up again. <laughs> so we would really love some young people or just people that can sit on the floor. So thank you very much for letting me bring this to you and I'd love to talk to you afterwards. There's something particular you want to oh, sorry, yeah. thank you. Yes, I, I would like prayer to bring other people to Mainly Music. So if you know of people that would like to come, if you would be willing to help us and to pray for strength for the wonderful helpers that I have. Thank you. Let's pray for Mainly Music. Thank you, Lord, for this long-time ministry that's been going in our church. 
Thank you for all the willing helpers and thank you particularly for Sue for leading and all the work that she puts into this. We do pray you would continue to raise up the right volunteers. We pray you would send more families to us, the, the ones that you know, God, need to be here to experience the love and friendship that we have here and ultimately to find Jesus. And so we just want to thank you for everything you are doing so far in the Music, but we ask for more, God. We ask that you would do a great thing going forward for this ministry, sending us new people, sending us new volunteers so that many more people get to know the love of God through this ministry in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Thanks, Sue and the team for that. We're going to take up our offering during the next song. And for those that have come prepared, uh, by the way, on the way in, you might have seen on the roof of the building, thanks to a generous donor, a, a very generous donation. We're getting the roof replaced this week on the whole building out there. It's been leaking for years. That's good, isn't it? Uh, well done to that person that's honoured God uh, with that and, and hasn't needed all the accolades. Uh, it's just gone, I'm just going to honour God with this. It's, it's wonderful to see, but it's, it's great for our church too, isn't it, to have that kind of another thing just ticked off the list where we go, we don't have to keep stressing about that all the time. And also, I'm sure Dr. Ros is going to love not having water dripping down a surgery and the aerobics room is going to love not having to mop up all the puddles and people slipping over. Uh, so it's going to be good for the community and good for our church and great for our finances as well. So uh, I'm just rejoicing in that generosity. May we all be generous to God uh, with our finances. So let me just pray for the offering before we stand and sing. Heavenly Father, we recognise everything we have is yours anyway. Uh, we're only giving back some to your church ministry, your church, Jesus, not ours, your church. We're just giving some back of what you have blessed us with. Help us to be a generous people, a sacrificial people that, that, that give out of the generosity of our heart. And we want to pray that every single dollar that is given to our church will be used with wisdom so that people might get to know the love of God. So thank you, God, how you have inspired generosity and continue to do that, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand as we are sing together. of our Savior, the mercy of our God, the cross that leaves no question of the measure of His love. Our chains are gone, our debt is paid, the cross has While the guilty one walks free, death would be our fortune. Our chains are gone, our death is paid. The cross. Our chains are gone, our death 
beats dance to death and life goes on. Our chains are gone. Our death is pain. The cross has moved us from the grave. For Jesus' blood that sets us free, we stand to death and life Crosses overthrown the grade. Amen. Amen. Please take a seat. Get your Bibles ready. Good morning. Today's readings from John 4, verses 1 to 27. Jesus knew the Pharisees had heard he was baptizing and making more disciples than John. Though Jesus himself didn't baptize them, his disciples did. So he left Judea and returned to Galilee. He had to go through Samaria on the way. Eventually he came to the Samaritan village of Sychar near the field that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired from the long walk, sat wearily beside the well about noontime. Soon a Samaritan woman came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, Please give me a drink. He was alone at the time because his disciples had gone into the village to buy some food. The woman was surprised, for Jews refused to have anything to do with Samaritans. She said to Jesus, you are a Jew and I am a Samaritan woman. Why are you asking me for a drink? Jesus replied, if you only knew the gift God has for you and who you are speaking to, you would ask me and I would give you living water. But sir, you don't have a rope or a bucket, she said, and this well is very deep. Where would you get this living water? And besides, do you think you're greater than our ancestor Jacob who gave us this well? How can you offer better water than he and his sons and his animals enjoyed? Jesus replied, Anyone who drinks this water will soon become thirsty again. But those who drink the water I give will never be thirsty again. It becomes a fresh bubbling spring within them, giving them eternal life. Please, sir, the woman said, give me this water, then I'll never be thirsty again, and I won't have to come here to get water. Go get your husband, Jesus told her. I don't have a husband, the woman replied. Jesus said, you're right, you don't have a husband, for you have had five husbands, and you aren't even married to the one you're living with now. You certainly spoke the truth. Sir, the woman said, you must be a prophet. So tell me, why is it you Jews insist that Jerusalem is the only place of worship while we Samaritans claim it is here at Mount Gerizim where our ancestors worshipped? Jesus replied, Believe me, dear woman, the time is coming when it will no longer matter whether you worship the Father on this mountain or in Jerusalem. You Samaritans know very little about the one you worship while we Jews know all about him for salvation comes through the Jews. But the time is coming, indeed it's here now, when true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. The Father is looking for those who will worship him that way. For God is spirit, so those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. The woman said, I know the Messiah is coming, the one who is called Christ. When he comes, he will explain everything to us. Then Jesus told her, I am the Messiah. Just then his disciples came back. They were shocked to find him talking to a woman, but none of them had the nerve to ask, what do you want with her or why are you talking to her? Thank you, Anika. A birthday girl doing the Bible reading for us. That's good, isn't it, as well? 
Well, we are continuing our series through the Gospel of John. Uh, If you haven't been here, we've uh, looked at the first few chapters so far, and uh, now we're getting into chapter four. And uh, we we can't do every single chapter, so we're skipping a little bit ahead next week, and we get into that exciting John chapter 11 next year. Um, So last year we looked at Nicodemus, and we looked at him, and Jesus said, you must be born again. And Jesus was talking about spiritual truth compared to Nicodemus kind of only looking in the physical, right, and not understanding. And here in chapter 4, we've almost got the same situation, haven't we? A a woman who's only thinking in the physical world and not seeing the spiritual reality. Remember last week we talked, there is a spiritual nature to people. It's the part that connects with God. And when Jesus said you must be born again, this spiritual nature needs to be renewed to be reconciled to God so that we can be born again. And so here again, we have a similar kind of story with a Samaritan woman. There's a whole lot of stuff in this chapter four, if you go and read it. But I wanted to look at just two parts. Often in my sermons, I like to sort of one main thing. There's kind of two things that struck me today that we're going to look at in two parts as well. And we start with the first one. You might have heard this, uh, this saying uh, before when people talk about business. Oh, gone too far. Let's go back a couple. Oh. All right, there we go. This one. And companies say this, we exist for the benefit of our members. You've heard that one before. Um, I think uh, possibly that uh, industry super fund ad, if you've seen that on say that's one of their catch cries. It's all for the benefit of the me- and all the profits go to members. And lots of companies use this idea that everything we do, it's for the benefit of you. All right, you're the members and everything exists so that you get the benefits. It's a a common kind of catch try. Well, the, the church is actually a little bit different. Certainly the church benefits from the church. In fact, the Bible says for us to thrive in faith and life, we need each other. Did you know that? For, for us to actually fully experience what God has for us as followers of Jesus and full life, we need each other. Certainly the church has benefits for members for coming together. It, absolutely does. In fact, the Bible knows nothing about a solo Christian. It doesn't exist in the Bible. It's not like you're on your own. You're part of the body of Christ and you're connected to God's people. That's the only Christians that the Bible knows. Those that are part of the body of Christ, they're connected to each other. And so there certainly are benefits for members. But the reality is, I think this is true, is that we don't actually exist just for our benefit, or maybe at all. (laughs) We exist for the benefit of those not yet in. Does that make sense? We're in organisations that's different. We don't just go, well, we exist for our benefit. Everyone here, we're all in. Let's put the fences up. And everything we do in this place is going to be so that we get everything we want and that we are comfortable (laughs) because that's why we exist. It can't be if we are a sent people. And the whole purpose of the church, Jesus said, just before Jesus went to heaven, He said, what did he say? Stay and build some walls, build some walls and make sure no one gets in. Is that what he said? No. What did he say? He said, go. Everyone say go. Go. He said, go and make disciples of all the nations. We are a sent people. And so unlike all these businesses and companies say, we exist for the benefit of our members. We say we exist for the benefit of those that are not yet in. Amen. It changes the way we look at things. It changes my attitude even to church (laughs) because suddenly I'm not just going, well, at church, I just want to make sure I get everything I like and everything I want because the church is here for me. (laughs) No, the church is here to be a light, isn't it, to the nations? Amen? A city on a hill? The church is here so that others, so we exist for the benefits of others. And Jesus modelled this. He modelled this. He invested a lot of time with his disciples And we have to do that. We have to find people that we invest time with discipling. Jesus did that. But Jesus also modelled, he got accused of this by the Pharisees. We would see it as a positive thing. It was an accusation against him. Jesus, you're a friend of sinners. (laughs) The religious leaders accused him of that as that was a a really negative thing, that Jesus would be a friend of sinners, (laughs) that Jesus would seek out conversation and friendship and relationship with people that were just not like him and didn't think like him. And this is what happens in this story in chapter 4 with the Samaritan woman, with this woman by the well. (laughs) 
Now this time, uh, here Jesus, he's out, he's alone and he's come to the region of Samaria. Now this in itself was a little bit different. Uh, We've talked a bit about this in the church before, but just so that you know the context, just in case you don't understand, uh, the 8th century BC, the northern kingdom of Israel, after decades or centuries of rejecting God's law and not obeying God, in 722 BC, because of their sin, the Assyrians from the north came and captured Israel. God allowed them as judgment for their sin. 8th century BC, we're talking, they were captured and taken by Assyria. And because of that, they intermingled with these pagan people with different religious beliefs. And they ended up with this group of people, the Samaritans, who followed some of the Jewish law, but they didn't quite follow all the traditions in the law. And they had some of their own rules and regulations. And so the true Jewish people, they saw them as unclean. These people, they were kind of despised, these Samaritan people, because they weren't pure Jews and they hadn't followed the pure law. And they'd gone and accepted pagan practices and pagan people. So the the Samaritan area, it's been written in history that quite often Jews might walk for hours or even days to not go through the territory. They they didn't want to associate with these people, right? (laughs) That was kind of the culture at the time. But here's Jesus and he's going through Samaria and he's in this town of Sychar or Sychar, however you want to say it. Just to give you a bit of an idea of where it is there, you might be able to see Bethlehem, Jerusalem, and then a bit further up there, you can see, uh, but not as far up as Nazareth. Nazareth. This is where it was. And Jesus and his disciples are enter into this town. And here we see a little bit, first of all, if you've got your Bibles there, a bit of a glimpse of Jesus' humanity. If you've got your Bibles, we're in chapter 4. In verse 6, 5 and 6 there. Uh, well, if we go a bit further on, we'll start in verse 4. He had to go through Samaria on the way. He came to the Samaritan village of Sychar near the field that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there and Jesus, tired from the long walk, sat wearily beside the well about new time. Soon a Samaritan came to draw water to her. So here we see a glimpse of Jesus' humanity. Jesus is God in the flesh. But when Jesus became human, he gave up his divine privileges, didn't he? He gave up, he became like us. He was still God in the flesh, but he became human. It's important. It's very important that Jesus is both God and human because we need that divine person so that we can connect with God, don't we? But we need a representative that can represent the human race to stand before us as well. Do you know that? We need a saviour that stands before God as both God and human to represent connection with God, but also to represent connection with us. The saviour has to be both God and man. And so Jesus, he gave up some of his divine privileges, even so much you would know that God allowed himself, God in the flesh, to be killed on a cross. Amen? that's, That's what Jesus, the Son of God, gave up. But here we see a glimpse of that, his humanity, he's... Even though he's got in the foot, he's tired and he's thirsty. Who's been tired and thirsty? Who was cleaning up wedding with their daughter till midnight last night? You know, and got home and was sitting in bed at 2 a.m. staring at the clock with mind racing going, please God, can I get some sleep for church? You know? <laughs> we know what it is to be tired and weary. Our Saviour knows what it's like to be tired and weary. That's amazing how he can relate to us. But here we are, that's his humanity. And so he comes to this place, Jacob's Well. Now, by the way, if you like some of the history around, uh, you can go to Jacob's Well. Terry, you might have to click that for me. Go to the picture of Jacob's Well. Now, I haven't done heaps of research into this. You have to go and do some of that yourself. Some of these historical sites around Israel and Turkey and all these places, they're kind of in the area and then they claim them to be the historical site. But Certainly this one, Christians, Jews and Muslims all would say that at the very least, this is the area where Jacob thousands of years ago dug a well for his family. Um, So you can go and do some of the research, but it's quite likely at the very least, if this is not the actual well, it's very close to the area, right, of where this site was. It's a historical place. Sometimes I find this helpful to think about that because we're not talking about stories and fables, are we? We're talking about real events, Real events that happen. So this is Jacob's well. So Jesus turns up here and he gets there in the middle of the day and in the middle of the day, all his disciples have gone to get food because he's hungry as well. (laughs) 
He's the saviour of the world, but he's hungry because he's taken on humanity. <laughs> and they've all gone into town to find some food. Jesus is there alone. It's the middle of day and a, this woman comes to draw some water. Now, historically, it was the woman's job to go and draw the water. You know that? How good is that, man? Go and get them to, to go to the well and draw the water. Historically, normally, you would do that in the early, cool of the morning or in the cool of the night, right? That's what you would normally do. But this is the middle of the day in the hot sun. The text doesn't say it. But I guess we can infer because we get to find out a bit about this lady's situation. She might have been a bit of an outcast, right? So maybe she's coming when the others aren't there because she's living a bit of a life that wouldn't quite fit in. We don't, the text doesn't say, but we can kind of infer. Either way, she's there and Jesus is there alone and he's there. She's very different to him, very different to Jesus. We'll get to that in a moment. And yet Jesus is a friend of sinners, isn't he? And Jesus goes out of his way to share the kingdom of God, to share about God with this woman. Now, he, we're looking for these people of peace, right? We've been talking about in church. We're praying. We're trying to find the people to have the conversation with. Jesus, he's got a bit more insight than Matt Brown, right? And so he knows this woman's ready to have this conversation (laughs) about Jesus. And so he comes to this woman that's very different to himself. In fact, this person that the culture would say, Jesus, what are you doing? Why are you talking to this person? (laughs) Jesus should not be talking to this person for a whole bunch of reasons. Here's a few reasons why Jesus shouldn't be talking to this person. Next slide, please, Terry. Before I look. Go to the next one. Keep going along. First of all, she's a Samaritan. We mentioned, I talked about this just before, didn't I? The Jews and the Samaritans, the good Jews, they didn't go and have friendship with Samaritans. (laughs) You're just, in the culture, you're just, I mean, you didn't associate them. They didn't come around your house for dinner. They didn't go come down to Boffy with us after Jim Cast V and have a cup of coffee. They went to the other, you better go to Tides, you Samaritans. You know, you go down there. They, you don't eat together. You don't talk together. You just don't associate with them. But for Jesus, he doesn't care. <laughs> Jesus, friend of sinners. So the first thing is, this person's very different and the culture says, no, Samaritan. Next slide, please, Terry. She's a woman. Now, if you think this doesn't matter, well, let's have a bit of a read. Well, we'll read verses 9 and 10, first of all, in your Bible, just to to check that I'm not making this stuff up. Verse 9, so Jesus having conversation, verse 9 says, The woman was surprised, for Jews refused to have anything to do with Samaritans. (laughs) Right? So Matt Brown, Pastor Matt's not making it up. The Bible said so. Jews didn't talk to these people. And this lady's kind of shocked that Jesus would even stop and have a conversation with her. (laughs) You're a Jew and I'm a Samaritan, verse verse 9. Why are you asking me for a drink? (laughs) Jesus replied, verse 10, If you only knew the the gift God has for you and who you are speaking to, you would ask me and I'll give you living water. We'll come back to the minute. And then the woman, go down to, we'll skip ahead down to verse 27. Then his disciples came back and the NLT says they were shocked to find him talking to a woman, but none of them had the nerve to ask him. (laughs) No one was going to question it, but they were shocked, right? We don't get this because I go down to to Boffy and sit with someone that's different and have a cup of tea and none of you blink an eye, right? This was shocking to them. The text says they were shocked. Thirdly, next thing, please, Terry, if we have the next slide. Not only was she a Samaritan, she was a woman, she was living a very immoral life. We see that in the text. If you've got your Bibles again, have a look at verses 16 to 18, just to remind yourself about what's going on here. Jesus says, go and get your husband, Jesus told her. The woman said, I don't have a husband. <laughs> Jesus said, you're right, you don't have a husband, for you have had five husbands and you're not even married to the man you're living with now. <laughs> you certainly spoke the truth. <laughs> so here's this woman. It's a woman that the Jewish people say you don't associate with. You don't, you don't go and talk with this person. They're a Samaritan. They're a woman. In fact, even in some cultures today, that's, uh, I was chatting this week a bit to someone about India, um, uh, Michael Leader, one of our Australian reps, and his bright sister Joy, her brother got married last year, and he's a lawyer, and he married a lawyer, two lawyers, this family. And uh, we're talking about when they went on their first date. Well, you're not allowed to even as men and women go anywhere privately. If you're not married in India, they normally have arranged marriages. So they kind of in public, maybe just sort of had something sneakily, eaten something together in public. You can't even go and sort of it's not right for a man and woman not married to be privately together at all. 
very different. So he's Jesus. He's this person. Not supposed to talk to her. Not supposed to have friendship with her. Not supposed to have conversation, to show an interest in her life. You're supposed to just go, hey, they're not like me and I don't talk to them. But Jesus, no. He loves all people. What we say, the vision of our church, we're, we're loving all people, but then we're praying to find the people of peace that will go on this discipleship journey. We're praying for the woman at the well, right? We're loving all people and we're doing it even with people that are different to us, right? This is what Jesus, and it's hard, isn't it? And in some ways, you know, we're not very multicultural around here. We're probably not going to have a, the Samaritans, but certainly sometimes it's hard to build friendships and show love and interest in people that are very different to you, isn't it? Come on, admit it. It's not just me, is it? Sometimes it's tough showing love and interest and friendship, wondering if this is a person of peace with people that are very different to me. It's not always easy. But this is what Jesus has modelled to us in, in this and so many times. We're going to have the next slide, please, Terry. Maybe a different culture, maybe different values, maybe different behaviours, people that don't look like you, maybe different beliefs. A whole lot of other lists you could have, had, right? People that are just not like you. And it would take a little bit of effort. You go, it's a bit tiring. Uh, that person's not like me and I... I go out to lunch and they're using language I don't like and, you know, they're talking about things I don't really get and uh, the, the relationships they're living, it's not how I would, and, and it's, it's just a little bit strange, a bit different. But Jesus modelled, he didn't just speak, he modelled that we love all people, amen? And we treat everyone with respect and we go and try and have conversations and we go and try and love all people and then in the midst of that, we will find those women at the well and men at the well that are ready to have a conversation about Jesus. You will find them. But you won't find them if you're not willing to go and build a relationship and show an interest in people that are different to you. If all you want is people that think the same as you, well, we might as well put up the fences, right? We might as well pull down the sign out the front and tell anyone else to come in and just say, no, nah, this is us. We only want people like us as well. And I was thinking a little bit about this this week. And for myself, I've grown up in a very European, I haven't had to go across the culture. And for myself, I've grown up in generations of Christian family. It hasn't been something for my faith that anyone's had to really journey through, right? I've, I've had the blessing of Christian family. You know, we had the Rachel and Bevan's wedding last night and all our Christian family there and celebrating God. And like, it's just, just wonderful, right? But that hasn't been everyone's story, has it? And so I started to think, rather than me tell you this, I might get someone just to give us a little glimpse into this. So I'm going to ask V to come up. Because I was thinking about this and I thought, I remember uh, when I baptised V, her testimony was, kind of started, she wouldn't talk to someone like Pastor Matt normally. Uh, I'm a little bit different. And I thought, oh, that's a bit unfair. But uh, we might as well get a glimpse of someone that's actually experienced this, right? Someone who's connected with people that are a bit different. So, so V, you, were you a Christian before you came to the gym and the church? No, no, not at all. But a little bit different? living a bit of a different life and values to what you are now? What was a couple of things that you think were a little bit different to? <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess I was a big swearer. Yep. Uh, my language was not great. Um, values very, very different to what they are now. Yep. yep. So you didn't have many or any close Christian friends. Oh. Uh, so it was a bit of a foreign thing to you, a little bit, little bit different. Very much so. So through work and through the gym, uh, you met some Christian people that showed an interest and uh, showed friendship and they were thought a bit differently to you. Who were some of those people that you met? And Well, uh, Samantha Brown was one of them. Yep. <laughs> I don't know where she's disappeared to. Yeah, she's having a rest up the back there. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, ben. Yep. Benny boy over there. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yourself and Lynn. Yep. And Lynn. Yep. And you had a work colleague as yeah, well. Yeah, work colleague. Um, I didn't know she was Christian and I sat next to her and, uh, yeah, it came out later that she was Christian. And So people that think very differently to you at the time, mm -hmm. uh, different values, different beliefs, but start to show an interest in you and have conversation yep. and build a friendship. So what's been the impact of that on your life? Oh, it's, you know, I... I just looked up, I've been a Christian six and a half years now, and probably seven and a half years ago, Sam and I started training together at the gym, 
and she just invested in me. Um, you know, she, we literally, and for me at the time, I thought it was very um, odd and uncom- it would be uncomfortable for her, but we sat at the pub with our Bibles doing reading the Bible together. Later on, I learned Pastor Matt does love a pub meal, so <laughs> Sam's probably there quite a bit. Um, but for me, I went, wow, like she's actually coming into my space yep. and meeting me where I am. So how would you encourage the church to go and have these, show an interest in people that think differently to us or think, how how would you encourage to say, is it worth it? Oh, 100% it's worth it. And your five minute conversation with someone might be the first conversation or it might be the 10th conversation they've had with the Christian. Hmm. And that just might be enough to get them asking more questions. And what an absolute witness, Sam, Um, Ben, Lynn and yourself, meeting me where I was at, having those conversations with me and I have completely changed, Mm. you know, and it it can be as simple as one conversation. So now if you don't know, V's our church secretary as well, (laughs) uh, which is wonderful, isn't it, church? Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) So I just want to pray a blessing on that. I just just wanted to, it's no use me telling you, I've grown up in a Christian family, right? I thought it'd be nice to hear from someone that's experienced differently to encourage you Show an interest in people that don't think like you. You never know which one. You might start to find someone that has had other conversations. You don't know. But you've got to do what Jesus said and step out and you've got to show an interest and friendship to people that are different to you. Let me pray a blessing on V. Heavenly Father, thank you for V's journey. Thank you, God, uh, for the friendships and people around her that, that showed an interest in her life. And we thank you how you have grown her faith to a place now where she's serving the church as church secretary. And we just want to rejoice in that. And we want to pray that this would inspire us to have those conversations, to show an interest in others as you did, Jesus. So thank you for her story and may it inspire us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thanks, V, for giving us a personal example of this rather than just theoretical. It's good, isn't it? It's very good. Well, I just want to briefly touch on the second uh, kind of important part of this story. So... So certainly, the the first big thing I noticed as I read this story is this showing an interest in people that are different to you, having the conversations, showing friendship and finding, sometimes you might have those conversations, you might broach it and you'll find the person just doesn't want a bar of you. I've had that. Anyone had that before? Yep, that happens, doesn't it? But if you're praying and you're constantly praying for opportunities, you just might find that you have some relationship with someone that God's working on. Amen? But you've got to have the conversations. You've got to show the interest. You've got to be a friend of sinners like Jesus. You've got to do it. And on top of this, I guess I would say for us as a church family, we are making decisions about church life, not just so that we can be comfortable and get what we want. Yes? We are constantly asking, what does this mean for those that don't yet know. (laughs) I'm always asking that question in everything we do, not just what does it mean for us, you're important, you matter, you do matter church family, I'm not saying you're not important, but I don't know about you, people's eternity, we said last week, people's eternity at stake, isn't it? And so we make decisions in church based on those that aren't yet in as well, it's important. Have those conversations. But I just want to get to the next part just to to finish. The actual conversation that Jesus had. If we have the next slide, please, Terry. The actual conversation that Jesus had. Next one. We'll keep skipping ahead a little bit here. The living water. Jesus answered, if you knew the gift of God and who was asking you for a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. Jesus here is having another conversation with this woman where he's trying to help her understand that in Jesus, there's a new reality. Next slide, please, Terry. There's a new reality. Jesus fulfilled the Old Testament law, right? They had the Old Testament covenant with the law of Moses and all the sacrificial system and all those religious practices. Jesus fulfills the Old Testament law. In a sense, he also replaces it. He does. It's not that the law was bad. It came from, where'd the law come from? God, right? It wasn't bad, but it was for a time to teach us something about who God is, to teach us something about who we were until it could be made perfect in Christ, amen? 
And Jesus came and fulfills and in a sense replaces. That's why it's called the new covenant. It expands on the old covenant in the law and all those practices and says, now it's fulfilled in Jesus. And what I think we see as we go through the, the start of John, only a few chapters in, we see some signs that Jesus is fulfilling the Old Testament law and that there's, there's a new reality in Christ. The first one is the, the, the water to wine. And even that one, I think there's an image there where Jesus uses the ceremonial jars for the new wine, right? I think there's an image there of new wine of Jesus. So the next one. Then we didn't look at this chapter. You can put them all up, Terry. Put the four pictures up there. Put, keep going. Put that one in the next one. Then we didn't study this in church, but in the next part of chapter two, you might know the story. Jesus goes into the temple and there's all this money-making schemes and it's, it's really not honouring God in the temple. And Jesus upturns all the money changes. But in that time, Jesus says, I am the temple. You know that? Again, there's this image where no longer this Old Testament building and religious practice, it's no longer that. Now it's the spiritual reality that God Himself, Jesus, He is the temple. That we have the presence of God through the power of the Spirit right now. The, the new reality of Jesus fulfilling the law is this personal spiritual relationship with God. Makes sense? It's not a religious practice. And then we had Nicodemus, who again, he's only thinking physically and or the law that he knows. And Jesus says, you must be what? Born again. That in Jesus, there's now this spiritual reality that he's fulfilled the law. And there's this real sense that you can know God personally and you can experience God personally in a relationship with God being born again. And then finally with the woman in the well again, Jesus is saying, I mean, the woman's looking for physical water. We get that. If you have your Bibles, have a quick glance again, verses 11 and 12. But sir, you don't have a rope or a bucket, she said, and this well is very deep. Where would you get this living water? And besides, do you think you're greater than our ancestor Jacob who gave us this well? How can you offer better water than he and his sons and his ancestor enjoyed? So the woman again is only thinking physically, right? She's thinking old covenants. And then the religious practices, go down to verse 20. Verse 20, she says, Tell me why it is that you Jews insist that Jerusalem is the only place of worship, while we Samaritans claim it's here at Mount Gerizim, where our ancestors worship. So again, she's thinking about the Old Testament religious rules, right? All the religious rules and practices. And Jesus saying, no, I'm God in the flesh here. God in the flesh has come. Living water, where you can experience the reality of knowing God yourself. Next slide, please. There we go. We'll skip ahead to the next one, Terry. Thanks if you can click on that one. And uh, we'll go to the, the last, yeah, we'll leave it there. Here it is in John chapter four. Jesus said, but the time is coming and is already here when true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. The Father is looking for anyone who will worship him that way. For God is spirit, so those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. So Jesus comes and he says, stop now, now that God himself has come in the flesh and he's allowed the way for you to have an actual living relationship with God through the Holy Spirit. Jesus says he's not looking for people who want a bit of religion. He's not looking for people who just want the old religious practices. He's looking for people that really want to know that God is real. Amen. That want to know that we're sons and daughters of God, living what that we can experience real relationship with the living God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Yes. It's not a religious practice. And so again here in, in John, with this story, Jesus is coming and confirming who he is. I mean, he tells them, the woman recognises that he's the Messiah. In verse 26, Jesus told her, I am the Messiah. <laughs> and in the part we didn't read, you go further down, down to verse 42. Now we know that he is indeed the saviour of the world. As a side note, thinking about women as well, we could talk about that in this story. This woman goes and evangelises her whole town, if you go and read the story. And again, um, just amazing that another amazing thing where Jesus sort of turned around some of those paradigms and this woman's the one that goes, uh, who didn't really have authority as women, uh, didn't have teaching, but goes and half the town's converted. That's a whole other side story. <laughs> but the main thing we want to notice here is that Jesus again is saying, I'm not looking for a bit of religion. The Old Testament law, it was for a time and a purpose, but now Jesus is here. Jesus is here, amen? 
And there's this real relationship with God by the power of the Holy Spirit, living water. It's not a set of religious practices. It's a relationship with God where we can actually say we are sons and daughters of God. And I love that all through John, Jesus is showing that he is the fulfilment of everything God has promised. Everything God said he was doing to restore people to himself, to give people a hope and a future, he did in Jesus Christ, in his life, death and resurrection. Living water, God is real. There is a spiritual nature to you and you can connect with God because Jesus died and rose again for you. It's an amazing story. There's so much more we could say in it. But I think that's the main two things to capture, the way that Jesus is a friend of sinners and we are going to go and we are going to show an interest and love in people that are just not like you and me. Yes, I'm going to make the effort. And in prayer, I'm going to make the effort and I'm going to find some women and men at the well. Sometimes I'm going to make the effort and I'm just going to walk away and the people don't want a bar of me. Oh, well, that's okay. I'm sure God would rather that Matt Brown and all of you tried 10 times to do this and eight of them failed and then two of them wanted to know Jesus. Imagine that. Imagine if all of us showed an interest in 10 people that aren't like us and all of us had two people that showed an interest. We'd double our church in one year, wouldn't we? Maybe triple. So we've got to be praying and prayerful because we're loving all people but we are trying to find these people of peace that are ready to go on the conversations, the men and women at the well. And we're recognising there are symbols and religious things we do, but there's nothing powerful in religion. Living water, God is real and relationship with God is what will last forever. Amen? Amen. Let's pray together and let's sing that Jesus is always ready to take us into his open arms. Heavenly Father, we need your help because when it comes to loving and showing interest in people that aren't like us. I know I and many of us, we find it difficult. We're afraid of rejection, God. We're afraid of looking silly. We're afraid of what people will think. We don't know what to say. (laughs) Would you instill in us a confidence to have a go, to be prayerful and to have those conversations, to try and find those people of peace, those ones, the women and men at the world that are actually ready. Help us, God, to do that out of that deep desire that we have that you are living water. You are real life. What is really hopeful and good, that thing that people are really searching for deep in their hearts, you are that person. So help us to, because we recognise how desperately people need you, that you would help us to overcome our fears, overcome our worries, and just to be prayerful and to start loving people. Help us, God, to have those conversations. I thank you for our gym and the many opportunities we get in the gym to meet people that aren't like us. For young adults and youth groups and mainly musics and for all those other areas of life, our workplaces, our next-door neighbours, help us, God, with prayer led by your Spirit, to be a friend of sinners as our Saviour was, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Please stand as we uh, sing, I come to the altar. It says, the Father's arms open wide, His forgiveness is there. He's always there with arms open wide. I guess the question is, are we willing to open our arms on behalf of Jesus to people? Are you hurting and broken within? Overwhelmed by the weight of sin, Jesus is calling. Have you come to the end of the sand? Oh, come to the altar.
behind your regrets and mistakes. Come today, there's no reason to wait. Jesus is calling. Bring your sorrows and pray them for joy. As you wait for the crown, tell the world of the treasure you found. Yes, Lord Jesus, help us to tell the world of the treasure we've found. To recognize that this is so important above anything else, knowing Jesus, that we will be willing in prayer and in faith to go and build bridges with people that just don't think like us, with a heart's desire that they would know the treasure that we've found. And all the people said, Amen. Going to have a cuppa and encourage someone and uh, bless someone today.